I'm Chris, this is Gross Models, and welcome to this build of a triple ballista. Uh, now, I was contacted a while back from the lovely people at, at Twist Up, and they asked, would I be interested in building one of their kits? I, of course, said, yes, please, that would be lovely. Uh, so I had a look through their website and selected this as being one that I, I thought would be easy enough for me to do, but still fun. Uh, so it's a, a 3D wooden puzzle. It's more of a kit than a puzzle, but... Uh, it's the triple ballista, so it's like a, a, a catapult type, uh, more of a, a crossbow, triple crossbow ballista scorpion thing. Um, yeah, it, it looks like it's going to be an interesting fun build. Uh, the instructions obviously come on paper here, lots of details on there. Uh, we've got a bag full of various bits, pins and things as well. Uh, yeah, lots of pins and arrowheads and rope and twine and things uh, and as all of these type of builds are uh, wooden sort of laser cut uh, sprues no they're not really sprues but they sort of are uh, which you can probably just break out the pieces some may need a little bit of cutting or sanding or filing to make good uh, now these is a little bit different to the previous ones I've done uh, a lot of these need to be glued together. Uh, now, I'm normally uh, I use the the Gorilla Super Glue, which is like a gel glue, which I think is going to work fine on these. I've used it to put wooden things together before, and it has worked very well. So I'm sure that'll be all right. If not, I've got other various glues to choose from. Uh, so yes, we've got lots of lovely parts in here. Um, no, there aren't any parts missing, I don't know why that's not there, but there we go. Um, yeah, these are already coming out, so I'm sure it's going to be no trouble at all. Um, I shall have a look through the paperwork and see how the instructions go. Uh, yeah, it's going to look like that at the end, or something a little bit like that. Uh, it says you might need some extra tools, uh, a utility knife, needle nose pliers, uh, optional file and a hand drill. Uh, all of that I've got to hand or can get very easily here uh, if the base parts are difficult to remove cut them out um, after the nail passes through the wooden board using these no pliers to bend the excess on the wooden board so yeah all good uh, it says white glue slow drying type takes about 10 minutes to dry thoroughly so they're talking about like a, a Elmer's glue or PVA glue I think but I'm, I'm pretty sure that's going to be better so I'll see how it goes and we'll get on with that uh, obviously we've got Lots of materials supplied, iron chain, used to make the front end a zipper. I don't know. Uh, there is a YouTube uh, scan code to watch the tutorial, but I'm going to forget about that. Uh, it says, according to legend, uh, the Woohoo Chariot was a continuous crossbow uh, invented by Zhu Lang of the Shu Kingdom uh, during the Three Kingdoms period by ten arrows at a time. Cool. So yeah, that, that would be quite interesting. The instructions aren't bound together, but they're just on individual sheets, but that's not a problem. Nice and easy to follow. So I'll put the other ones out of the way. We'll start with this one, which is assembling the wheel frame. So let's have a look and see. We need B13 and AL6. How are these done? This is A2. That works, so it's A1, A16 is what that must mean. So B13, that's B2. Don't know how any of these are labelled as yet. Let's see. That's A1. So is there an A16? Not as such on there. I don't know. Right. We'll go for things that look like the same. Oh, there we go. This is B3. This is B13. So it's just on there. I don't know quite why that works. Um, it says... Assemble the wheel bayonet. Uh, end without pointed brass nails. Without pointed brass nails. I don't know. Okay, we'll, we'll have a look through and see what we can do. This is going to be the first piece that I'm going to take off of the sprue. And yeah, it comes off quite nicely. Uh, what I will do is use a small metal file just to get rid of the excess nub arrangements there that you can just about feel just to make it fit together nicely feel feel a bit better obviously it's a wheel i don't know if the wheels are actually going to turn or not but we might as well build it as if they are 
Here we go. So I also need the A L six things or A sixteen. Uh, the bits that look like that. So let's just go through the sprues until I find something that looks like that. It's these, which are all marked A16. So, yeah, it looks like individual bits, but they're actually doubles. So that is there. So these are just going to go... Let's see. Yeah, they're going to line up with those holes there, like that. So we're using the brass pointed nails for these, I think. Just do not bend or truncate for now. So we're going to take a brass pointed nail. We're going to be using two of them. So these are going to go through here and then go through there. Nothing really holds it in place as yet. They're not not very frictiony at the moment, but I'm sure that end is going to get bent over at some point. Looks like it might have other things to do in there as well. Excess nails are shortened. Bend and clamp to the board. So basically we're going to be folding the end over, which is an interesting way of doing it. That's fine. Uh, right, I'm going to nip off and do the rest of this off screen because you don't need to see me do that several times. I'll get the parts ready for the next stage and we'll start building that. Right, uh, that's all of those together through there. Uh, not bent over yet because there's other things to do with that yet. Uh, this piece needs to be glued. It just says apply glue to the connection. So I'm just going to add a touch of this super glue gel. Into the middle there. I don't think it's going to need to be very much at all. And that, when I put that in there, will spread throughout all of that. And that gives us the pointy, uh, what is it called? The wheel bayonet. Cool. I shall stand that there to make sure that dries correctly. Uh, right. I've arranged these pieces. Now it says uh, silver pin through. There's two holes, so I'm assuming it means two pins rather than just the one that's pictured. So we'll put one through to begin with. So we're going through there, then through that one. Like that. Um, actually, no, I'm going to do both. I'm going to do both at the same time. If I can pick the other one up. Yeah, there we go. I think it might be trickier to line everything up multiple times. Uh, then we've got that that's going to go through there. There's like a, a shaft sleeve. Uh, that will go through there as well, won't it? It will go all the way through that. Let's assume it isn't going to fit all the way through there. And we'll put those two through there. Keeping this the same orientation. Uh, so that was that. Then we've got this, another big cog thing. Go through there. One of these on the other side. So it says, be careful while assembling because it's sharp. Uh, excess nails are shortened. Use needle nail pliers to bend and clamp to the board. So what I'm going to do is uh, shorten them down a bit using this cutter part of my pliers. If this doesn't work very well, I might well go and find some actual cutters. But I think that'll be okay. So I've been cut that off there. Cut that one off there as well. And then the excess can bend over. Uh, I'm going to bend this one the other way. See that? It's through all of it, so I'll put that through again later. Let's get the pins all the way through and then we can just fold that down against that should create quite a nice bit i don't know why that it's definitely showing it in the middle there but it's not actually held in there maybe i've done something wrong or maybe i've got the wrong bit there was a bag in here that all seemed to be the same 
Yeah, they are all the same. Let me just double check that I've not got a bag of another ones that are bigger. I've got a bag of other ones that are bigger. I didn't measure them. Right, I shall have to retake that back apart again. And put that in place because that's five mil. It depends what you're measuring. If you're measuring the outside, then that's five mil, the old the one I was using. But I'm pretty sure that is going to be a better fit. Yeah, that will go in there like that. So I'll tidy that up, put that back there, get the next bits ready, and then we'll finish off the wheel. Okay, that's now got the proper brass uh, tubing in there that fits nicely. Uh, we're going to be doing some more gluing to put these in place. What I'm going to do is a little bit of glue to do four of these, a wider part into the center. So one, two, three, and four. Okay, uh, they should stay about there, so I'm quite happy with that. I'll get the other four glued in as well, and then we'll fix that to the wheel. And then I'm pretty sure I've got to go back and do the whole thing three more times. Let's get those there. One, two, three, and four. Okay, so then that is going into here. Uh, it's got to go in from the other side because of all the pins and things. So I'm going to try and hold that, drop, stop the pins dropping out. All of these are going to locate into the edges around there. So that seems to be just a case of gentle wiggling. Get them all lined up. There we go. Oh, that one's not come through properly. That one slipped out of the middle. And a pin's come out the back there where I was playing around with it as well. All right, let's take that back out. Try and get that back in the middle. Without having to take it all apart again. Yeah, that's going to work. That, let's turn it back over. There's the pin that fell out. Put that back through. You sort of, it's, yeah, you need these to be secure but obviously it can't be that secure i don't know yeah i've got this in the wrong way around as well so that needs to be coming from the other side i should have paid attention to the the picture of the finish of it so i'm going to, need to get that out again all of those off that needs to be the other way up back down there pop that back in there so that's that way up. So if I can get that on there that way up, that would help. It might be a little bit easier. Obviously being aware of all the pins coming through the back there as well. The trouble is you can't really wait for that to dry before you do this bit because you might need to manipulate them a little bit to get them all lined up. But I think that's just about there. Uh, I shall try and hold the pins in place again, turn it over, because we need to use the other ones of these to once again go over in the right place. Uh, doesn't matter if they're that way around, well, it doesn't matter which way around because they look nice that way around. They don't actually have to necessarily join up the same on the other side. Let's get those on there. Looks like there's two more stages to be done here. So we've got that where we want all of that to be. Hmm. Might be easier to do one bit at a time. I don't know. Because what we need to do now is it says cut off, but there's not really anything extra to cut off. So I just need to bend these over, hold in place. So I bend it a little bit and then bend it more. I need to do that. I said, I know that one's falling off, but that's all right. It doesn't matter which way round you go because 
They're pins. They they can rotate. So that's that. I shall get all of these done on there. Making sure everything lines up and goes where it should. Yeah, one at a time is probably the easiest way of doing this. Because then you don't get things falling off like that and pins falling out and bits falling off the other side as well. So we'll get that one on there. Over. I'm trying to squeeze it from the pin the other side, not just the wood. So it should all fit together nicely. On that side, get that bit down. That cool, and then I've got this to go back on the other side with two pins, both falling out, which is fine. In through there, there, and there. Bend and squish. One more pin there and there, bend and squish. Cool. Now, none of those are actually sticking out the edge of the wheel, so that's all fine. That looks nice and secure. That's it's got some wobble there, but that once that glue sets on the inside bit, that will be fine. So that's that. Then we've just got to put this on the outside of there, which it does say glue in place. So one more dab of glue onto the four notches around the edge there. That will go to there, just like that, or like that. And that is the outside of my wheel. Uh, the inside has got the little rivety bits over it on both sides, but that's fine. That's okay. That looks nice. It looks made. I know it, it is made, but it, it looks, you know, properly hammered together and proper old worldy. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, so that's that. Uh, it says this step can also be used as page eight. Last step. I don't know what. I've done it too soon, have I? All oh, right. Yeah, you don't have to use the wheels yet. So... You can install the wheels first, then attach everything. Uh, step one can be done here, but that's okay. I've, I've made a wheel. Uh, I need to make four, three more of those. So I shall go ahead and do that off camera. Uh, actually, I'm going to leave this to dry to make sure it does dry properly and all works together with this glue. Uh, assuming that's all okay, I shall come back, make some more, and then come back and show you what's what when we go on to page three. So, yeah. So there we have four wheels all made, ready to go, glue dried, all worked as intended and as I hoped. Uh, so they're to be put aside because we're not using them quite yet. We're going to be building the main body. Uh, now the next stage, the next part of the instruction, making the body crossbars. Uh, there's actually four on here. It's a little bit um, unclear on the, the instruction manual, but basically it's, it's quartered. Uh, so we've got step one, assemble the front rail, which is group A. Uh, that's what I've got the parts ready to do, and it's not really an assembly thing. We've got this part, B2, we've got the metal chain, and two little eyelet hooks. Um, they basically just screw into the two little uh, pre-made holes on there. To get them started, and then screw them in. There we go. All the way down, uh, possibly easier to do by putting something through it and then turn it around once you've got it started. Uh, so it looks like these are going to be left upright, so they're sort of up and down rather than side to side. Uh, no, it's easier to start with fingers and you can feel more that it is actually biting and starting off. Going in in a straight direction, or, or straight-ish. Obviously, it's not a, a functional part, so it doesn't have to be perfectly level. Get that in and all the way down, just like that. Uh, then we need the chain, which is hiding 
it's over the back there there we go uh, right so the ends of the chain are once more open links like that as you can see there so that needs to go get the right way around over there I'm going to need to put my glasses of seeing on the chain hooks onto that it's going to be easier with the pliers it might well be smaller tools may be useful but I work with what I've got at hand at the moment. Okay. Yeah, there we go. No, we don't. There we do. We do. We'll get there eventually. No, we won't. That link is actually broken. That's why that came apart as easy as it did. Uh, right, let me get a bit closer. Yeah, they do work as individual links, but say that first one was actually broken so all you need to do is get half of one link I know you can't really see what I'm doing here but if you get half of the link and then grab it with another pair of pliers or something that you can twist twist that open and that has to go over there that's quite a big chunk that it's going over I might have to open it even more than that get that really open but not so far that it breaks again. Go over there. Come on. There we go. That's gone half over there. Right. Okay. Uh, Quite a big, thick metal bar that it's got to go over. I shall play around with it and tease it open and see what I can come up with and show you when I've got it. Right, I managed it. Uh, the only way I could do it was actually to take the end link off and actually almost flatten it out. These links are quite um, shaped, quite thick. They're not just a, a round link, obviously, to make the link, the chain lay flatter. So I had to flatten out the end links to get a little bit more room in them so I could open them up and then close them around the... The loop there so that's that's that it's a little bit longer than it is in the picture um but i don't know it seems to be about right it, it looks okay to me i think that's how it would be at the front of a, a thing to pull it around and move it so i'm going with that so that's the, the first bit uh group a i'll get the parts ready for group b and put them together uh actually i'm going to do d b and i'll do d as well because it's exactly the same it's just got an extra bar to it uh i'll come back and show you group C afterwards so let's do those two and then come back to that one right uh, I have done stage bit two uh, stage two group B which is that now I've got to do exactly the same again with these pieces which is just the same but a little bit bigger uh, so it says to use glue to reinforce the connection parts so what I've been doing is a little bit of glue there that's going on there same on the other side. And there. Uh, then this went through the middle of both of them. Let's do one side to begin with. Uh, making sure that goes the correct way around like that. There. Then we can put a little bit more glue around that bit. We'll go on that side. Then, before all the glue dries and sets, get all of this done properly around here as well. That goes not on the bottom of these pegs, but around them. And onto the bits that are going to go through. Uh, I'm going to put that just through one of them to begin with. Make sure that lines up. That's gone through there. That one hasn't little bit of wiggle there we go and then that one I'm gonna add a little bit more glue along all of this or in a couple of places along all of this just to hold the two plates together in case there's not enough on that main assembly that will go through there that will go through there all that together 
sure everything is a good tight fit and it looks just like that so that's basically a bigger version of that one so we've got a b and d uh, i'll find the parts for stage three step three group c and then we'll build that right that is all of them uh two of these nine of those and one of the top pieces uh again there's a slightly longer edge on one of these so you've got to make sure that goes through the double thickness obviously uh what am i going to do i'm going to put these through one of these first so they're going in that way around like that but obviously again they need to be glued slightly uh, on this one i'm actually going to glue the holes i think that will be my quickest and easiest way of doing this uh, i'm going to glue it from this side because then i can actually just run between them all and glue on the plate in the middle there will just help hold the plate to the other plate which i'm actually going to put down there afterwards as well so i'm going to get all these through here all lined up so the longer side is easier for me to pick up like this uh yeah i'm going to get them all in might be a bad idea but we'll find out in a moment if i can get the other bit on there or not longer end longer end Okay, so that's that. Then we need to get this on all of them and obviously all glued together as well. Glued together very nicely. I'm happy with that. That on there. Uh, then I need to glue all of these into the top bit. That I'm going to do on these themselves. So I'm going to get some around. I'm not going to worry about the back. I'm going to try and get all the other three sides just to dab a glue on. As long as a couple of them are holding in place, it don't really need to worry about the others. They're going to be held securely anyway. But uh, this doesn't have a way around, so that's good. For those lined up. That. Maneuver them one at a time. So that's all of them down there. Let's push that all together to give that a good chance to hold together. It's held securely, it hasn't actually got any wobble to it at all, so I know it's going to be in the right place when it's squashed properly. So that should be that. So I need to give all of these parts enough time to dry properly before we turn the page and basically put them all together into the framework. So that's that's going to be fun. But at the moment, I'm going to... I'm actually going to put something heavy on top of that just to hold that in place. That looks like that's secure. Can't see any gaps through any of these parts there, so that's all right. That's not been glued anywhere, so that's definitely all right. Uh, yeah, I'm going to put something heavy on that because it's starting to separate in there. It's obviously not quite flat in the middle. So I shall clip that together, leave that for a bit, and then come back and start the page four. And good to go for page four. Uh, right, this... I've done one. Look, it looks lovely, doesn't it? That looks all like it's professionally been built. I'm going to do another one, but mirrored, because I don't like to have the the nice looking bit on the outside. So this I'm going to do the same, but on the outside. So the way I did it, we've got these three pieces that go together like that. Uh, they are pinned together. Uh, this bit doesn't matter which way around, because you can turn it around either way you like. So I pin through all three of those. Uh, the text is a little bit misleading. It says use brass pin without a tip to pass through pos the positioning hole. And it just says about one of them. Uh, whereas there are no brass pins without a tip. And you need a tip. to. But I think it means that they're not sharp. Because they're pins that get bent to fit rather than actually you know, you know force their way through anything. So uh, yeah, it seems to work the way I've done it. But that's why I wanted to do one first. To check before I go ahead and, you know, video me doing it completely wrong. I like to video me doing it a bit, a bit right, hopefully. Uh, so we'll get one more pin through that hole and one through that hole. Well, I picked up two. We might as well do both at a time. It looks like I know what I'm doing. I know it's terrible, but that's just the way it looks. So that will go through that. And then I'll drop that one out. So, yeah. Put that through that hole. it's all the way through bend it over support the pin the other end and 
there we go they're all supported as is they should be uh, now these bits need to go in there like that and it says to use glue to uh, reinforce uh, the connection parts so just on that middle strip where that's going to go I'm going to put a bit at the top a bit in the hole and a bit down the bottom on both sides while I've got the glue out I might as well do both sides that hole down the bottom glue out the way that will go in there like that and the same on the other side Squish them in so they hold in nicely. That's that. Uh, then we get these three parts, which go together like that. Uh, they've got a little bit of a bend to them, so I'm actually going to play around with them and get them, hopefully, so that they bend against each other and hold each other securely, although that doesn't. That's really got quite a bend to that middle one. But it shouldn't matter, because we're going to put in put pins through them anyway. These pins I'm going to put through from this side. Uh, now there's lots of pins to do on this, so I'm not going to sit and video doing all of those. But you've seen me put pins in before. It's just like that. Uh, for two, four, six, eight of them through there. Uh, then when that's done, a little bit of glue on here, and that will sit on the top just like it does on that one. So I shall see you back with that, ready to get everything sort of together. Right, the biggest bit of the assembly yet. This is obviously the main framework for it. Uh, so we've got this big laddery thing that we put on at the back. That goes at the back. Uh, it does say about a couple of parts being attacked with glue, and a couple of parts it says don't use glue. Uh, so this bit, it actually doesn't say, but it does say about reinforcing some other things. So I'm going to put some glue around those, because I can... And I'm pretty sure that that's going to be a fairly substantial sort of part of the build. So it needs to be properly secure. So that will go in there like that. Nicely. I like that. That's quite secure. I'm happy with that. Uh, the double bit goes in there next. And it does say the square tenon position can be properly reinforced with glue. So I'm going to put a bit of glue around the flat there the edge top and the other side in there like that that's not such a tight fit so yeah uh, this one is not gloat and it says no glue is available here is what it actually says about that uh, this is obviously a square thing going in a round hole so i think that's going to be some sort of rotational aiming something i don't know uh, and the bit we've got here and another one Go down there it doesn't say about glue or not glue so i am gonna add some i'm not gonna glue the parts together but i am gonna put some glue around the edge and the flats where it will be going together in there obviously making sure the chain piece that we've got is on the front and the outside uh, so that's that now get the other side on in exactly the same way but with less messing around uh, it's obviously a little bit harder to do this as well because you've got to do all of it at once. Uh, not gluing that, but putting some there. So this is the tricky bit, and the trickiest bit so far. Let's try this. We've got to get all of these lined up, and this first one on the right-hand side here is going to be quite stiff by the seams of the other side. Get that lined up, that lined up, that lined up. That one just should fall in place. And this one, because they're splayed apart, is going to be the trickiest. Ah, no, it isn't. <laughs> Might have been the trickiest to do, but actually wasn't. That's that. And that side is proving a little bit easier than the first side. So that's OK. I'll put it on that one and apply quite a lot of pressure. That's all flat and square on there. I can't see a little gap down here on that bit. So let's squeeze that together a bit more. There we go. And there we have some framework with a bit that wobbles. I don't know. I'm sure it's meant to wobble because they said don't glue it. So that's that. I think these are the axles for the wheels. So it's all coming together. 
So we're getting there. Uh, step four, make the hinge. So I've got to do that now. I'll get the parts ready, come back and see how that goes together. Here we go with this bit. I've made one already to practice, as I like to do now, to make sure I do things properly for you. Uh, there's one little problem with these. They're not a great fit. Uh, that is loose in there. Uh, it is glued in place, so it's not it's not terrible. It's not the end of the world, but it's the first time I've had one of these pits that hasn't been a, a good, near-perfect fit. So, uh, yeah, be warned of that if you're doing this and trying to do it without glue. It's not going to work. Uh, so pins go through here, obviously to hold this in place again. I'm quite liking the pins now. Um, it was It's very different to any normal modelling that I have done. But it works. Um, if they were actual, you know, proper nails or that sort of thing, it might be better. But I honestly don't know how that would work with, you know, having to hammer it all together and things like that. So with these bending over pins, like staple type things, it works. So yeah, they, they've chosen chosen well with that as a construction method, I think. Uh, so that's that. Then these need to go in there. So what I've been doing and what I've done on the last one is put some glue in and around the holes. Big three. And then I put them in there. Once they're in there, obviously they're going to stay. And once they're glued, they're definitely going to stay. So they're actually held in place quite securely, left and right, just not the other way. So, yeah, there we go. Blue, glue, glue. Obviously, if you're using a different type of glue, different application methods may apply. You might want to, you know, squirt some out onto earth a board or something and then use a cocktail stick to apply it in place uh, or if you've got a, a small detail nozzle or small enough nozzle like that one then that works for me perfectly all right there we go that's that so that's the two done that's the end of page four uh page five drifts off and starts building the actual weaponry itself so yeah what i'm gonna do is make sure all of this is properly dried before i move on so uh yeah, that side again, it's got a little gap, so I'm just going to give that, before the glue completely dries, make sure everything is where it needs to be, because this is going to put up with firing things, so you want to make sure it's put together properly. That's that. Uh, I don't know exactly where the, I think these might be for winding it up, for, for cocking it. So, uh, yeah, we'll put those off to one side. We've got the wheels off to one side. I shall tidy away my tiny pins and uh, I can see you soon for a little bit more. Now onto the crossbow itself, assembled the crossbow. Uh, basically we've got all of these parts for the frame and the main crossbow limbs themselves. Uh, so I have arranged these in numerical order, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. That's very strange, there's like thick, thick, thin, Thick, thin, thick, thin, thick, thin, thick, thick. So it's sort of e either side works in to the middle, but I don't quite understand. Um, it says silver sack, pass through the positioning hole, then gently tap with the hammer. Don't use those eight holes there, it says. So I'm thinking that obviously means use the rest of the holes. So here, it'll hold it all together. Uh, I don't actually have a hammer to hand, so we'll see how they go through and see what happens. Uh, I have just broken these out of the sprue and not sanded them down yet. I figure I'll sand them down once they're together, because that seems to be the, the more sensible way of doing it. Uh, so I'm just going to get these all stacked up together. It's going to be quite a meaty sort of thing. That one's the wrong way up. Okay. Yeah, so that's got to be the other way up to all of the others, for some reason. That's got the number on the other side, but it's it's got to be that way up, because it won't line up with everything if it's the other way up. Uh, right, I did note down here we've got another bit with uh, fitting these sticks through, which there seem to be quite a few, which is lucky, because one of them seems to be broken and, and pretty broken. Uh, but it looks like we're only going to use three of them anyway, so uh, yeah, I've got two of those ready to go through here, and there's another one through another bit of the mechanism. Uh, so let's try and get these pinned together 
Uh, it looks like we're going to be using several of these nail type pins, but not in those eight holes. So there's lots of other holes to use. I'm going to start on the end. I'm going to, it's never just going to line up perfectly and go through all of them like that. So tapping with a hammer may be the option. What I'm actually going to do is push it through the first one and then see if I can get the second one through as well. Yeah. My idea being, if I can get this through, now, it's not going to go all the way through. You've got to do it from the other side as well. That makes sense to me. Okay. <laughs> uh, right, we've got multiple holes on some of these. That doesn't make sense to me. I expect this hole to the other side is going to be in a slightly different position. So, yeah, if that goes through there, that doesn't line up. So we'll put that through that one. Now these are all falling over. I'm going to make sure I get them in the right order. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. That will be 5, yes. So I expect... That's sort of finished that one, although... It's got a little bit of a hole in it, so that will line up sort of there. Okay, I quite like that. That works. What I'm going to do now is get another one through down here on the opposite side. Hopefully that will hold everything in shape for every other nail to go through the rest of it. It's not really going through the bottom one, but that's okay. So if that's held together like that, then in theory that should go straight through. Pretty much. There's a little bit of resistance there, but not lots. That'll do the job. I don't know how well it's actually going to hold everything together, though. I suppose enough pins and enough pins from the other side as well. It might well work. Yeah, I was leaving a few behind, obviously, because they're right at the end. So the middle bit's not going to be very sturdy, but the rest of it should be. I don't understand how that's going to work. Uh, right, let me get that last one through. Fill the pins a little bit through some of these, but not all the way through. Let's do the same from the other side. And then I'll go away and do the rest not being filmed, because, you know, even I can't go too far wrong with doing this through all of these. I'll get one through there, I'll go for one through there as well. And we'll see how that works out for everything. That go in there, that one down there. So far, so good. And then that one. And then that through there and there. Mostly. Nope, that didn't line up down there. I can see that actually coming out through the side. So, not quite lined up through that. That'll do. There we go. That is now. And this one. Feels like it's too tight. It's probably too tight. That felt okay though. So yeah, the middle bit's not holding together as you'd imagine because basically there's no nail not going through that bit. But yeah, that's working. I'll fill in the rest of the holes and then come back for installing the limbs. So that's all those together. It is actually holding together surprisingly well. Uh, so now I can get rid of the extra nubs and things quite easily because it's all working as one piece so that should actually be quite easy i'm not going to polish it to a, a finish but I'm just going to get rid of the rough edges where the nub things were uh, so that's that then i'll come back and show you the uh, limbs going in okay i do particularly like this warm reminder nails have sharp points be careful when you assemble yeah, I like a warm reminder from time to time. Uh, right, so we've got these two bars, which are going to go through there. That's easy. Uh, it just says it's a small wooden stick, which is quite a nice tight fit in there. I don't know exactly what they're used for, but they're certainly going to hold things together a little bit more. I am a little bit concerned that I've got three more holes that look like it's going to take these three bars and one of them is broken. So if that is the case, I may well replace one of the, uh, that one maybe, I don't know, not one of those, certainly they need to be stronger, but yeah. Right, so this is the main limbs, which are going to fit through there. Uh, it obviously fits, but only just. 
So it's going to be a careful finagling and pushing because obviously these are quite thin. And you've got to push that way, but they don't want to go that way because of the bending. Uh, I might just shave these down a touch just to make life a little bit easier. To sort of sharpen the points just a touch. Could hopefully feed through a little bit nicer without actually making any difference because the end of that started to crack away just as I was pushing it through. Uh, right, let me make sure I've got it the right way up before I do anything else. So I sort of need to go through like that. So let's try that. Actually, even better, before I do that, I am going to file the inside just to make sure there's no roughness that I can get away with. That looks okay. Feels all right. There's a couple of bits that I can feel it catching on. So let's remove them. There are a couple of bits that it's catching on. It looks fine looking down there, but you can't tell exactly where. Let's see. Yeah, there's definitely a rough edge over this side. So yeah. I don't want to remove it, you know, to make it a, a loose fit, but also I don't want to get caught up, especially if I get, you know, three quarters of the way through and then come to a screaming halt. That feels a little bit easier. Let's try. A little bit of wobbling, a little bit of pushing. Something on the other side. I made it all the way through, well, at least with one of them. So there we go. Third one's coming through as well. There we go. Now that's now that's cooking with gas, and I'm a little bit less frightened about it now because there's the bigger chunk coming in. But it's got to be straighter, so I'm going to have to. Uh, I can pull back a little bit more and push just from the top. There we go. Maybe. I'm worried about squeezing this with my other hand as well, so. That's better, that's not straight now, so it should be easy. He says it not being easy. Looking good. Looking like a proper crossbow now as well, so that's always fun. Right. That's that. Now, next up, I've done the rods. We've got to put these bits in. Now, again, it doesn't say about doing it on the other side, but I'm assuming that that's going to be the case. So we've got four pieces. One of them is obviously just going to go there. This one with the shaped piece is going to have to go there. Yeah, that works. And then the same on the other side. Now, these are just going in with the brass pins. So again, if I can get one through most of the way, I'm worried about that one. Go for the one that stayed there. If I can get that through there. There we go. And nothing much holding that in place. I might apply a touch of glue. Yeah, because that's just dropping in place. So I am going to glue this in place. I'll get all of those four put on. And then we'll turn the page and see what mysteries await. Right, that's all those in there. They say glued in place, the pins seem to be holding okay, so I'm happy with that. So we're done so far. Uh, now we've got to do the breaker, apparently. I don't know if that's a, a thing, but it says the breaker and the bowstring, so yeah. Uh, I've got the parts already ready to go. Uh, it looks like they're going over this bar here, not the lower one, but the top one. Uh, and not like that either. All right, I've got to do the same on the other side, so I actually need more bits of those right so we've got a little washery thing that goes over there then we've got the breaker itself which goes over there and then one of these fits on there which is basically just going to hold it in place by the looks of it so that should be and is a nice tight fit 
that's gone down flush with that. I don't know exactly how that's going to fit on the other side, but I'm sure it will. So that's what we've got here. Uh, so that is, yeah, basically the strings are going to come across, go into that groove. And by pulling this down, you basically lift the string out of the groove. It nips across, hits the arrow and pings into whatever you've got it aimed at. Uh, we need one more rod through there because obviously that's what we're using to join all of these together. So that has no washers or anything on it. It's just actually before I, I'm going to put that on there before I put it on properly. That'd be easier to do. Okay, so that's that. That's going through there, which will then go through the one the other side. So I need two more of these little offery type things, uh, the brackets. I'll put that through there, then that through there and there. Although there's plenty of room to do that later. And that goes on the end there. I will work those in so they're a lot closer anyway, but for now that will do that. As will that on there. That can't escape anywhere, so yeah, that will pull down, lift it up, and uh, fire as you pull that. I like that, that's quite cool. Right, now we need to play around with the bowstring. Now, I was a little bit disappointed to find out that the bowstring is elastic. Uh, yeah, um, we're not. It's not an actual proper bow. Bow. These aren't being put under tension to bend it. I did worry. Laminate like that never going to work very well. So these are actually decorative. Uh, the actual power of um, firing is going to be because of the string rather than anything else. So uh, yeah, actually that needs to be right next to. Otherwise, it's not going to. Work? I don't know, we'll figure that out. Uh, right, so it says, uh, put that in there, you might need to do that. Uh, can be reinforced with glue. Okay, that's right, no, not a problem. That was quite secure, so I'm happy with that. So bow one, two, and three, we need to uh, open one end of the bowstring, it's tied around the bow for two turns and then fixed. Pull the bowstring around the top of bow two and pull the bowstring from the bottom. The bow string from the top of bow two and to the bow three. After bow three wrapped around twice, uh, take a short knot and pull the remaining bow string through the bow to the bow three opposite. Okay, right. So it looks like this is tied around here. I'm actually going to use some glue rather than trying to tie that. So we get that's affixed there. It's wrapped around there twice, then goes around the top of that one again twice. Twice, uh, both string from the bottom, put it around the top, and no, both, both three wraps around twice, so it goes around the top of that, around there twice, and then that's going to go off this way. Let's do the same thing, so we've got, it, it says tie a knot, but I think just doing it loosely, a, a little dab of glue might help. So, first things first, a little dab of glue. I'm going to go for right at the curvy part of there, that's where it should look right. So I'm going to put that on there. I'm not going to do it with my fingers because I get my fingers stuck and that wouldn't be fun. It would be fun for you lot, but less fun for me. So that is going to go on there. Just like that. Once I've got this wrapped around there a couple of times, I'll be adding a little bit more glue to reinforce and make sure it stays where it should be. But this glue should work equally well on the elastic type thing and the wood. So I shall leave that to dry. I shall come back when I've got at least one side of it wrapped and we'll see how it looks. Right, I've just glued that bit there as you saw earlier. I haven't added any more glue to any of this. I'm playing with the tension of the, the string because obviously this is what's going to get pulled back. If that's attached to there, um, without any tension and obviously this gets pulled back and from here it launches quite pitifully not not exactly yeah uh, so if i basically double the tension of that and pull that across from here 
Uh, then, let's see what I can release this with. There we go. That gives me, it still pulls back, but a much more forceful uh, release, which I think I'm going to go for. So I'm going to going to try that. I'm going to get this other side glued up and uh, see whether I've got sufficient to do the same thing again and give me a double bowstring. I'll have a look and play around with, and it might work out. It might not, but I'll try it first. Okay, I have cheated. I've gone ahead slightly. Uh, what I have done is replaced that bar that I said I was going to with the broken one, which I've actually added some glue to, to glue it in place and to make sure everything is properly held together. So uh, I, I'll leave that to dry to make sure that's all as it should be. But that's okay, because I need to leave this to one side anyway, because next we're going to be working on this. Uh, these are all the parts I've got left. There, there's not lots. Uh, oh, I should mention before I put that away. Yes, I... I've uh, added a little bit of glue to reinforce the, the joins on there, cut it off. I have got probably about the same amount left over. I'm going to see if I feel I can get some more power out of this, then I might add it again. I might not. I'll, I'll try it as stock first and then see about modifying it a little bit. So let me move that out of the way to let that dry. Uh, this is what we're working on next. Uh, we have the uh, aiming and the arming wire the uh i don't know what they call it the twisted rope uh so this is going on to here it's actually going through those two holes which is going to be great fun i'll do that off camera because yeah uh and then onto the ends of that we need to add these uh basically that's almost the right shape it's just got to be a hook because that will then hook over the top of the the string and that will draw it back and that will then drop into the arming place this can be removed and then yeah so uh yeah let's get this threaded through there which is not going to work effectively is it it's like threading an incredibly thick needle oh 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 no yes no yes no maybe i i feel like i've i've gone through the first level of the laminate but Obviously, that's not enough. I'll go through all of it. Yeah. Uh, right, just so this... I keep licking the ends to get it sharper, but it's sort of starting to fray a little bit. I've got to figure out which way around it's got to go. I'll try, I'll try the other end. Uh, just in case this video becomes four hours of me trying to thread a hole. Oh, oh, look. It might not. It might be done very, very quickly. I'm going to keep on a roll. I'm going to do this one. It is, look, look at that. How's that? Live on telly. So. Uh, is that going to, yes, it is going to work because that's got to go through there. That will that'll still go through the hole. It's all right. I thought I'd messed up big time, but I haven't. Uh, that's going through there. The thread is then coming through with it. And apparently that's going through the slats of the ladder through there, so it comes down and arms properly. Uh, but it can do that while the while it's attached to these. Uh, so basically I need to tie that off onto there. Let's get this to look a little bit more like they've got there. So we'll bend that out a bit. And then curve that round a bit more. This is very, very soft. So there we go. That That's a little bit more hook-like. I shall make the other one look like that. We'll get them tied to the ends. Uh, and then we'll see about mounting the uh, the ratchet, the big winch thing, so you can power it up. So, yeah, I shall see you in a moment. Okay, I've added a little bit of glue to that, not to reinforce it as well on both of them. They're all happy, good to go. I've just leaving them there for the glue to dry, because we need to work more down here. Uh, the thread can just hang off over there we've got to attach our windless uh winders windless windless anyway so they're just going to fit on there like fit and they need to go on further than that so the hole is actually visible on the other side because there's a peg that's got to go through there as well so it's gonna be a bit tight let's see 
Let's see if I can get this one on. One of them's got to be easier than the others. There we go. That'll go through there like that. So, yeah, oh, there is enough room. It's fine. I'm sure it's going to be all right. Yeah, there's no wobble room there, but there is enough for it to wind. Good. So we need two pins, which I have already prepared. I'm going to go through there. Obviously drop out the other side, but I can tighten that and bend that round momentarily. Go yeah, That one also will go through there. All the way through there it will. There we go. Nice. Uh, actually, I'm not... Uh, yeah, I'm going to bend them over just a bit so they're not going to come out. But they're also going to hold it in place quite securely and bend them just by, by hand, um, which you can't really see because... There we go. You can see it like that. There we go. Just bent over there like that. Uh, so I shall put this aside for this to dry. I'll get these threaded through there. And then we'll get ready to mount it all together, put the wheels on, and we'll be done. Oh, there's one thing they didn't show on the instructions at all. Um, I, I haven't just missed it, I think. Uh, this is obviously what we've just done. Put that on there. It says to put them through there, which is fine. This is going to be attached by using the two remaining rods uh, with some washery things on one of them. Uh, the other one just is going through just to hold it in place. This is the one that can still angle depending on which one of the two holes you want to put it through. Uh, wheels, obviously, then on there, then on there. It doesn't show you anything about making the arrows, but judging by what I've got left over, these are obviously the axles. These are the pins that I'm going to use to hold it onto the body. Um, I've got some parts on here, which are obviously going to be the axle washer things and for the other bit. That will be all of the pieces. I, I've got these pieces left over. I'm pretty sure that that's got a hole in the end there that's about the right size for that. So I shall glue those into there, and I'm pretty sure that that is then the arrow. There we go. There's no fletching or anything else on there. So I'll get those glued up and made up, and then we'll be good to go. And on to the final straight, the last bit, attaching it all together and then putting the wheels on. Uh, right, this is held in place with two bars, uh, one through there and one through either of those, depending on which height you want it to be angled up at. The back one is the more important, obviously. Uh, this needs a couple of the wooden washers and indeed the pins to hold it in place so what I'm going to do is pop a pin on first because it's easier to do one with it not being attached to stuff so that goes on there that will go through next to it then that goes through there and then through all of this and then through there and then those on the other side as well so let's line that up push it all the way through Obviously, you've got to get it lined up just right through all of those. And for some reason, that's not liking it. Let's see why that would be. Take it back out of there. It is going through. It's just tight. So just a little bit of forcing, wobbling, adjusting. There we go. Until that comes out the other side. Hopefully lined up with that hole there. Uh, it's flush with the other side, so just got to get that lined up before pushing it through the last little bit. There's not much room to manoeuvre that, so you obviously got to make it just right. There we go. So that goes through there, and then onto that we put the other washer. And that. Uh, that's going to need a little bit more pushing, tidying. Why oh, is that not going through the hang about? I'm not happy with that. That's not right. The washer goes the other side, I think. Yes. Right, so we've got uh, that going through there, then going through the framework, then the washer, then that. that. That's a better way of doing it. So let's get that back apart. There we go. Out you come. That'll do. I'll come off there. And that can come off there. Right, let's start again. We'll put on the end, right to the end, because there's not much room on this. Right, then we're going through there, then through a washer, then through all of that, then another washer. Even less room to play around with on this, so uh, yeah, that's going to be interesting. There's not enough room for another washer on there. Maybe one washer is all you need. 
it's very strange with the, the instructions on this. It obviously only shows one, but whether it means one or do the same the other side is never really made clear. They obviously give us enough to do another one the other side, but yeah, there's not enough room to put one in there. So I'm not going to, I'm going to just let this go through all the way out the other side and just pop that on the outside there. That's for a little bit further. There we go. So yeah, there's no, there's no need for that second washer for now anyway. Uh, and this one just goes through. It just, uh, depending on what angle you need it to be, if you want it quite low or obviously higher, that just goes through there. It says there is no need for a washer or anything. It's literally just to hold it like that, which does the job perfectly adequately. That's fine. Like that. Right. Now, the wheels, obviously. Axle goes through there. Uh, let me... Now I'm playing around with other bits. I've got to get these sorted out as well. I'm going to get these hooks hooks on. If I can pick up that one. There it is. Now everything's all dried. It's obviously easy to move things around a bit. So this would be... Let's wind that out a little bit more. There you go. Get them hooks over there. I might need to play with the balancing to get them tightening to the same degree. But that, I'm quite happy with that working like that. Good. Oh, except for that one not, not staying up. Where'd it go? There it is. Might make the hooks a little bit more hooky. Uh, right, so onto the washer, onto the washer, onto the axle goes a washer on either side. And then the wheels pop on and through. Now there is that metal washer thing uh, in the middle of the wheel there so that's what you're aiming for getting that to locate into there that one for some reason I can't seem to find I oh, know it's on there it's, it's on there it went in easier than I thought so that's that I shall get the other one done and then we'll come back and see how it looks and if it fires Okay, there we are. Completed, finally built and assembled. It's got the little uh, chain on the front for pulling it into place. Obviously the wheels turn around as they should and it's all assembled and ready to go. Now I'm going to try the loading for the first time. Uh, if I turn these handles this way, it pulls back the string. It really does. Look at that. Uh, I shall arrange the firing mechanism. Uh, that might need trimming, because that's going to go under there. That's all right. That's, that's, that's okay. Yep. So, pulling back, pulling back, pulling back. And about there. There we go. That's located in place. So, obviously, in the real thing, that would be stretching back these to such a degree that it's under so much pressure. And so, you can loosen off the pressure. Uh, you would have to remove your hooks from the string because otherwise it wouldn't fire that's that and then we're good to go let's push the button and see let's just yeah that fires it out and just like that so for speed and easiness i shall just do it by finger for now we have the triple bolts all lined up ready to go now there are there is a mark on here just there it says to put the end of the catapult to there so they're not all the way back but we'll line them up exactly as it says and then I, I, I shall brave bravely hold my finger here to catch or impale myself I don't think they're that sharp let's go three two one it fired two of them and the third one I don't know what happened I'll have to go back and look in slow motion let me try it one more time Obviously, nothing is quite 100% accurate. That one's a little bit higher. I don't know. That might be why it's not catching. It might not be. But anyway, we'll try it one more time. Yeah, that one, it's gone underneath that one. So, yeah. 
Maybe it works in the middle. Yes, you have to have things at hurt a little bit more as well, because obviously one firing three requires at a lower speed than firing one. So uh, yeah, I, I'll, I'll try some long distance shots and see how much distance I can get from it. I, I'll fire it just off over to the side there. I'll put that one in the middle again. So it you know, gives the best opportunity for everything to work as planned. See, that side might not be quite right. There's, oh, there's a little little ridge in there that I neglected to remove. Let's file that down a little bit. that give me a smoother... Yeah, that sits in there a little bit nicer now. Okay, let's, let's aim over there and we'll see just what happens. I'm, I'm well out of the way. Let me... I think it might make it about a metre, maybe maybe a metre and a half. Let's let's have a look and see. Yeah, well that one didn't make it the metre. Uh, the others, yeah, about a metre. They 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 flew through the air. So that was fine. Um, I I'm happy with that. It's quite a nice little executive toy. Not going to hurt anybody. Although in theory you could sharpen that. No, I'm not going to play around sharpening things and making it more dangerous. So that's that. Um, I might put the second bit on it but no I don't think I'll bother I, I think I should just leave it like that um so it just remains for me to once again thank uh it's not toy stub it's toys tub it's the it's a tub of toys so that was the triple ballista from toys tub uh so thank you very much for toys tub for sending me that for um review purposes and building and everything so uh do pop along to the website the link is in the description below uh, you may want to build one of these. They have lots of other different um, seed weapons and other things available. So have a look, see what you like. But thank you very much for watching. I shall see you soon for other videos along similar or different veins. But thank you very much for watching. See you soon. Bye bye for now.